Well, it is uh, always, every time I have to introduce Dr. Shaggy, it is a little bit difficult because of his background and he's uh, well known throughout the industry. And it's very hard to introduce him, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> First of all, uh, Dr. Shaggy um, is going to talk about uh, a paper that he worked with Caden Estancioni, uh, his collaborator for this paper. And then at the end, he will go ahead and uh, present uh, a relationship to his books and the trilogy that he's been working on for the last few years. Uh, Dr. Shaggy uh, basically had three phases in his career. His first phase was when he went to the military academy, West Point. He graduated from there, and then he joined the army, and the army, actually, he was West Point, graduated, he's already in the army. And then he went into Vietnam and participated as a Vietnam helicopter pilot, and he was obviously involved in a lot of combat operations in Vietnam. That alone is credit enough. But after he came back from Vietnam, he worked uh, in the second phase of his career. He worked as a government employee uh, in the civil service, basically uh, very instrumental in defining and guiding the uh, the uh, army directory when it comes to helicopter uh, procurement and helicopter design and, and, uh, and basically working with industry, trying to guide them into what the future helicopters should be and what the army really needed. That was a big part of uh, his career. And obviously a lot of the folks here in this audience and outside uh, the committee uh, know him for. But also um, when he retired from the civil service after spending so many years with the army uh, directorate, uh, he went and uh, was given a position uh, as a full professor at the George, at Georgia Tech, and there he was the uh, president of the uh, uh, you know the center of excellence. He was directing the center of excellence, the Rorograph Center of Excellence there, and he was also very instrumental in maintaining the leadership at Georgia Tech throughout the industry. And today, Georgia Tech is uh, recognized as one of the best. Uh, you know, seminal universities for new and future engineer. Definitely in great part due to his work while he was there. And now he's obviously an emeritus professor from that university. I just basically scratched the surface. If I was going to read his career line by line and accomplish by accomplishment, it would take me probably about half an hour. So I'm sorry if I uh, diminish his position in my presentation, but he's definitely an icon of our industry. Without further ado, Dan, please come over on board. Uh, well, I'm here representing uh, myself and uh, Caden Stanzi. Many of you know Caden. He's a very dynamic person. His wife passed away just a couple of months ago. I don't know if you knew that. And they happen to have a memorial for her this this week, so that's why yes. that's why he's not I, here. And pardon yeah. me for a second. I didn't introduce Caden, but Caden is well known within our yeah. committee, and he's collaborated with him yeah. quite a bit. So Caden, pardon me if I didn't introduce you for lack of time, but you know that we are thinking of you. Okay. Another big contributor sitting in the back of the room here, Dr. Bill Lewis. Uh, not only with respect to putting together this idea of uh, of freight hawks, but uh, uh, you know, he's kind of been, uh, I was proud to be his uh, advisor for his PhD, but we had worked in, uh, together in St. Louis before he came to Georgia Tech, and he went to some Middle Western school, I don't know where it was, but uh, but we got him straightened out when he came to Georgia Tech. I'm going to talk a little bit because uh, if you've been traveling uh, through cities like I have the last few years, it's horrendous traffic, and it's mostly trucks. It takes an hour more for me to get from Atlanta to St. Louis through Nashville. You get to Nashville, there's an hour bottleneck. And people that have to go through Atlanta, there's an hour bottleneck. There's so many trucks on the highways, okay? And really, uh, they need to deliver some things faster. I don't know if you knew Fred Smith, but he's a guy who started a company out of um, Nashville. Was it Nashville? No, it was, uh, it was yeah, Nashville, I guess it was. But anyway, he one day delivery and everything, UPS and everything. And right now there's a tremendous need to, to move cargo, okay? And so one of the things that uh, that Caden kind of came up with and, and, and Bill and, and us backed up is the fact the Army's getting rid of a lot of their Blackhawks, you know? And the Blackhawks have a lot of capability to, to move things, you know, ship to shore and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm going to cover what we're doing. I'm going to skip through some of Caden's stuff because it's just kind of a survey. 
Can you read that okay? The lights are kind of hard to read back here. But uh, this is, uh, you know, this is about helicopters and, and being able to carry things and, and do all that work. And, uh, you know, so logistics is the primary mission. Uh, Caden actually has a company called Logistics Works, which is it's kind of interesting. Uh, he was part of the Jaunt program, too. I don't know if he's in and out of that, but, uh, but there's part of it as well. But these are just uh, uh, some of the things, you know, Blade Air Mobility developed a successful public company model in Part 30, 135, and they're expanding and carrying power sources. But there's, there's uh, eVTOLs will be able to do some of it, but they're not going to be able to carry what a, a, a Blackhawk can carry, you know, and, and, and so that becomes important. So he went before helicopters. I, I know the recent present presentation gave kind of a history of helicopters. But I'm just going to kind of flip through some of this. But these are some of the early helicopter transportations, you know. And these are all in the paper, by the way, okay. Uh, and then here was the FH-104. It was another aircraft. And here's, uh, so Dayton, uh, Caden's got a lot of historical things when it comes to aviation, okay. Here's a Soviet aircraft. Uh, 20 years from World War II, you know, into World War II, there were many, exciting helicopter developments, transformation of the Piasecki HUP and some of these things as well. And and so I'm flipping through these because the Black Hawk is what we're concentrating on because, uh, and Caden kind of saw this and I saw this and Bill kind of saw this too. You know, the Army's buying more Black Hawks but the UH-60Ms. That means there's a lot of UH-60As and things that I help get involved with that, that are available uh, to, to do some things. And moving cargo is very time sensitive, you know. Just like the military needs to get there faster with some of the stuff that they've got, it's very important for uh, uh, for the industry. And then there's the K-Max, which some of you are familiar with, right? And it's being used more and more for logistics as well. Now this is what the current freight delivery is inefficient. And this is, is Logistics Works view of what it is today, you know, from manufacturing to tractor trailer to shipping hardware to receiving hardware, to intermodal terminal, destination, all this. That's kind of the baseline that you're working from, okay? So what we're trying to do with this is kind of do the future, kind of a transformative uh, logistics, you know, and be able to move things a lot faster and get things there. Uh, and they do that a little bit with small helicopters, but a lot of these cargoes, if you look at Savannah, Georgia thing, where these ships come in, they got these big containers and so the idea is that a container could fit with inside, uh, with inside a Black Hawk. And so you can carry a lot of different things that would really uh, relieve a lot of the problems that they have there. And here's one uh, uh, infrastructure challenge that he kind of shows. It also, with all this traffic and bottlenecks, it takes twice as long. You can see that uh, if you come in here and, and, and you gotta follow this, you're gonna be in bottlenecks, <laughs> you know, traffic-wise and everything else. So just an example of, you know, you can get there a hell of a lot faster. Uh, a boat would be one thing, but the helicopter could get you there a lot faster than that. So, so that's, that's one thing to consider. Uh, so anyway, autonomy is a big part of it, autonomy chain. Like, so we've been doing a lot of talk with different companies too and see how, uh, how we could do some of this because eventually you would like to be a great, great application of, of trying to have some autonomy in there. Uh, and safety and, and assured autonomy is what I've, I've been researching for a number of years. And assured autonomy consists of three things. One of them is called design time assurance. And what we're trying to do is with maintenance free operating periods, because you want to run things. The maintenance for Army helicopters and everything, it's got this whole infrastructure, right? But you really want to try to fly farther with maintenance free if you can. And there's methods to do that. The second one is development assurance. And, and that really is how you certify civil aircraft, you know, through development assurance. So that's part of assured autonomy. The one that's most popular the last few years is, um, is runtime assurance. If you heard about that, you know, basically, you know, that means that you have a fallback position uh, if you lose some part of your flight envelope, flight control. And so that's, uh, that's a very important piece of it too. So anyway, disruptive logistics, uh, uh, it, it talks about some of these things. Uh, most of it's in the paper. So traditional helicopters can be cost and operational effective compared to land vehicles 
uh, in the short haul freight and passenger markets where e vehicles and autonomy are promising their widespread ability to impact uh, short haul markets is at least five years away, okay? Future vetoes need to be designed for rapid conversion between packs and freight. You know, that, that's a very important, and veto design development program can benefit fixed weight.